Brad, have you started to believe the hype yet? Uh, I haven't caught up with the hype. No, we're just focusing on what we need to do. Um, we had a good review of our, our game in the weekend and, and a good little preview of Brisbane. So um, the challenges keep coming, even though that you know people could be fooled into thinking that, that Brisbane sitting down the lower half of the ladder have, have been pretty average this year, but certainly the last month they've been uh, showed really good signs in games and, and they're a dangerous opposition, um, as Hawthorne and, and Collingwood found out. What did you take out of last week and being able to win on the road, particularly over there? Oh, just the maturity of the group. I thought that, look, winning on the road is always a challenge, but I, I think when you kick, uh, made the quip after the game that you know, when the opposition kicked the first goal of the game to level the scores, it's always a concern because um, we felt like we really controlled the first 10 or so minutes of the game and, and we weren't able to convert that into scoreboard pressure. So um, I thought it was a character building effort to be able to, to absorb that and continue on and get the job done in the end. What's the latest on Sam Durden? No, he's fine. He's, um, he, he was 100% um, clear the next morning um, and uh, passed his concussion tests and then each subsequent day he's undergone another test and he's, he's pulled up really well. So he'll train fully today and barring mishap be available. How one of the boys have sent, have, have you sensed they've handled the greater expectation going in, expecting to win games? I know it would have always been the case, but that greater expectation going to games, how have you seen them sort of deal with that? Yeah, we, we don't we don't think about it. Um, I know that sounds a like a strange thing to say, but we the expectations are external. Um, we just look at what we've got to do to try and achieve the result that we want. So that from week to week that, that doesn't change and it didn't change at the start of the year when, when probably expectations were, were a lot lower. And now that there are greater expectations, we, we haven't changed the way we go about it and prepare. So the focus really has been, has been trying to keep the players' attention on where it needs to be. Can you give us an idea of how you've turned it around statistically with defence, right up the top in, in regards to points conceded? Yeah, well, how have you done that? It's been an evolution. You know, I mentioned before that, that the, the way we're playing this year is not brand new in 2018 it's it's been an evolution over a period of time um, and we weren't able to execute that as well as we would have liked last year um, but we had some challenges with that too we had a lot of um, personnel change at the start of the year and then we got hit with a lot of injuries throughout the year so the continuity of your team is is important to that uh, and now the players are able to execute what we've really been working on for three years is that injury list been a factor? It seems that you're generally yeah. doing pretty well in that, on that yeah. factor. No, no, there's, there's absolutely no denying that, that, that when you have um, pretty much your whole list available, I and mean, we've got some long-term injuries, Ed Vickers Willis and, and Declan Watson, but the majority of our list is available, which, um, which really helps. You know, and, and our opponent this week, Brisbane, are in the same boat. They've had you know, a, a terrific run with injury over the last two years, and, and they're building some real continuity with their team. And I think that's been a big part of their improvement over the last month in particular, that they've had the same players out there working on the things they've been working on. Have you been surprised, as everyone else has been surprised, with what Jared Waite's been able to do in the, in the latter part of his career at 35? Have you been surprised by it? Uh, no, but only because we watch him every day and we see him on the training track and you know, we see the way that, that he, he goes about his work. And um, you know, He's an elite trainer, he's an elite athlete. So, um, no, it's, it's pleasing to see him, him getting some reward, but he knows he's got to keep working hard and um, he's a great example to our younger players that you just never stop improving. Even at 35 years of age, there are still things you can get better at. How many years do you think he's got left in him? Uh, well, I'm just going to run out the cliche of it's just next game for him. And if he keeps putting those together, who knows? But uh, I know the risk is as soon as you start thinking like that, that's when your form will drop off. So uh, we've just got to keep him in the moment. And his body is 100% at this stage? Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, we, we probably preemptively rested him um, a little while ago uh, and we, we may look to do that again in the back half of the year but you know there's a buy coming up pretty soon so we'd like to space out um, his season just to be um, to be proactive in that but at the moment he's he's looking really good so and even when we rested him he was good too so he wasn't happy about being rested but sometimes you have to protect players from themselves. Do you have a timeline around when you look at contract extensions for he and Scotty Thompson? Uh, no, oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just the coach. I just coach them. The list managers provide the list for me. Um, clearly, I have input into that, but um, no, we haven't even thought about that yet. I mean, uh, Scotty Thompson and, and, and Wadey are just playing really good footy, so our focus is on making sure that continues. And if that continues, then I think things probably take care of themselves. If it's uh, Ben Jacobs' fault, does that make you sort of think you want to get that done a bit quicker than, than normal? Or? 
uh, uh, the contract. contract. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know, in terms of, of contracting and you know, looking at acquiring players from other clubs, you know, we just don't want to provide a running commentary on that all the time. You know, so you can keep asking me, but but I mean, we're just going to do our work behind the scenes and not provide a week to week update. Just on weight then, uh, from what you see day to day, physically, can you see him still excelling as much as he is this year, next year? Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't, I mean, I, I think the way he goes about it at the moment, he's a terrific athlete, he trains really well, but, you know, he's just got to stay in the moment week to week, and, you know, if you, if you keep that mindset as a professional athlete, then there's no telling how long you can play for, but as soon as you start thinking too much about the future, you take your eye off the ball. How close is Paul Hearn to a senior game? Yeah, he's, uh, he'll, he'll be in our squad, I suspect, this week. He's um, had a really good game uh, on the weekend in the VFL, and he's been in our emergencies a number of times this year. So, yeah, we're, we're looking really closely about um, his best role at AFL footy, and, and more than ever, he, he looks ready to play AFL footy after two years out. So is there every chance this week, or you just haven't selected your final 22? No, we haven't selected it yet, but, um, but we're pretty close. But he's, he's, um, he's been in the mix for... Uh, a number of weeks now, so um, you know, I suspect he'll be in our squad of, of what is it, 20, 24, 26, so um, yeah, and we'll whittle it down from there, but he's, he's certainly in the discussion every week. We're approaching the buy rounds now and the club's spoken openly about the war chest. Are you any closer to dusting the key off as the buy rounds approach and uh, ramping up talk for the few free agents? Uh, that, that's probably a question best directed to our GM of footy, I don't get too involved in that. With the Lions, they rack up some, some big scores. How do you sort of see your side going up against them and, and, and what are important areas there? Yeah, they, they've, as I mentioned at the start, that they've been really impressive in patches and games and, and I think they've had really good continuity of their team. So, you know, their forward line looks really settled. Their, their mid-forwards are playing good footy. The addition of Charlie Cameron, you know, has given them a lot of spark. Uh, Lewis Taylor, Dane Zorko. So they've got some, some players who can really run and carry the ball and, and they can be dangerous in offence and they've shown that um, at stages this year. So you know, we're going to have to defend really strongly. Um, but as is always the case, the game starts in the, in the midfield in the contest and if we win enough ball in there, then you know, we hope we can give our forwards enough supply. But if they get on top, they're a dangerous offensive team. And Taylor Garner just sitting out a little bit of training today. Is there an update or is, it, is there a niggle he's carrying? Yeah, he's... Um, look... We're always monitoring Garns. Um, he had a he had a really uh, solid first half, um, and we're just sort of gr gradually increasing his load to get him back to senior footy. So um, hopefully he's not too far away from returning to the senior side. But um, yeah, we've just got to be careful with him. So he'll he'll be on that graduated program for a little while. We play BFL this week. Uh, don't know. It'll depend on how he trains today.